Hello, Steve White, Steve Arts 89. Well, I've been doing a gay movie marathon recently, and it's been a lot more confronting than I thought. Um, a lot more, um, I mean, a lot of these films I relate to, I feel like they sort of, you know, I've lived a lot of these stories, and um, it's just made me think a lot about my life, and the life I've lived as a gay man, and the last couple of decades, and that. And some of it's been great, because it reminded me of so many things that I've done, and experiences, but other Elements have been um, kind of sad um, and disturbing when you think about the discrimination you've dealt with and um, some of the things about the gay lifestyle which um, are hard to deal with. And a couple of songs that have been stuck in my head from these films um, have been sort of haunting me. And I just um, I've been singing them to myself the last week or so, and I just had to listen to um, Charlene's I've Never Been to Me. Now, I know people wouldn't take that song seriously, it's, it's very camp, it's over the top, it's a bit too much, but I think the person who wrote it was really having some real emotions about their life, and um, it's basically a woman singing to another woman who has a, a regular life that she thinks is boring, um, and she's probably dreaming about the things she's never done, and so a woman saying, I've done all those things, I've lived all those dreams, I've, I've you know, I lived the sweet life, um, never knew I'd be bitter from the sweet, but um even though she's done all that, the party's over, and she's got no one. She doesn't have a family, she doesn't have children, she just has the memories of um, the life that she did have. Um, and that's something I think a lot of gay men can relate to. Um, we, there's, there's a fair amount of misogyny in our culture, and women are, after a certain age are sort of seen as, you know, expired. Um, and that happens in the gay community as well, when you're, you, you seem to only have two phases of your life as a gay man. There's boy, and daddy. And um, I'm possibly in a transition mode, but I don't ever see myself being a daddy. Certainly not a sugar daddy. I'll never be rich. And leather daddy, I, I can't pull that off. Um, so it really doesn't leave many options for me aside from um, a bit of queen. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> um, tired old bit of queen. I don't know. I don't know what my options are, but there doesn't seem to be many at the moment. And I'm sort of mourning my life because as a gay man, I'm sort of dead, I've aged out, and I'm, this is sort of over. Um, and this coincided with the you-know-what shutting everything down for a couple of years, and all the connections I did have that I probably could have maintained and kept myself in, you know, in, in the, um, in circulation to an extent, that all ended, and I just have no way of starting up and connecting with anyone, like, it's just, this is all over and gone, and just, it's like, looking back at another life, it's just really weird. Um, and there's just lines in it that are really haunting, like, you know, um, I've been to crying for unborn children who might have made me complete, you know, but she took the sweet life and never knew she'd be bitter from the sweet, and, you know, I spent the my life exploring the subtle whoring that costs too much to be free. I've been to paradise, but I've never been to me. It's very over the top, it's very camp, but it's really kind of, in a way, it's kind of brutal and devastating, and... Um, I don't know, I listened to it and I, I sang all the lyrics and I was crying, I'm like, I'm really feeling this song and I feel a bit ridiculous because it's this camp little 1977 song, but it really, really, really haunts me. Now the other song is Philadelphia from, of course, the film Philadelphia. Now there's two songs that are kind of haunting that I've been sort of humming and singing to myself. The first is the opening song, Philadelphia, and the ending song where they're showing the home videos of the boy who eventually you know, grows up to die of AIDS, um, and I don't know what that song is called, but it's, it seems to, um, the chorus seems to be Philadelphia as well, but, um, that song, I heard that when I was, um, having eating disorder problems, because I have an eating disorder, I was diagnosed when I was six years old, um, as anorexic, I, um, I remember that time as well, but I found my, I got my hospital records, my um, medical records, when you, you know what started, and I had to sort of evaluate my heart condition, how much I needed to be concerned about going out in public and so forth, um, which I don't anymore, <laughs> unless it's essential still. Um, and, um, yeah, I remember that time, and I remember when it first got really bad when I was in high school, and I, it was the first time I saw Philadelphia and heard that song, and I just remembered relating to the song and the experience, and I'm like, this is a song about a man dying of AIDS, 
and I'm relating to it. I'm, I'm feeling what this guy's feeling, like the literal things, like my clothes not fitting, and and just, just, it's, it just made me realize how sick I was and how dangerous it was. And it was the first, I think, idea I got that I have a problem and I need to do something about it. It probably, to some level, saved my life because I'm not sure if I would have made that connection to this. This problem is death. This is where this goes. This is where this leads. If I don't get control of it. Um, and I did, but it's been backwards and forwards. And at the moment, I'm having trouble. Um, I mean, the bright side of the you-know-what and not leaving the house and not seeing anyone is the pressure to be thin is gone from, from outside. I'm not weighing myself every day. I'm not counting calories. I'm not watching everything. I'm not doing all those things I had to do to be slim and have abs and all that shit you have to do to be acceptable in the gay scene to get people's attention and get people to look at you and see you um, which I did and I did but um the other issue with that it's been great to not weigh myself not to do that every day to myself but I also it doesn't it also makes sure I I, I don't lose weight I can see what my weight is I, you can't I, you can look at yourself and be delusional and not see what's really in front of you but you can't deny the numbers and by not weighing myself, I, I've probably lost weight and, and I'm not able to catch that. But I don't want to start weighing myself. But I just, I know, I catch glimpses of myself occasionally and I look a bit skeletal and I'm like, oh, is, am, I, am I back there again? I'm not really sure. Um, but listening to that song again reminded me of, I can't go back there again. I need to sort of start thinking about this. Um, I haven't been to a gym in five years. I worked out with some home gym equipment for probably a few months, the first few months of the you-know-what. But after that, I stopped. So I'm like, what's the point of not going out? I'm not going to see anyone anytime soon. Um, and yeah, I'm not quite sure how to manage it in this context, in this situation at the moment. But um, yeah, the song just reminded me, and I think it helped again to realise that I have to take this seriously. It's not a joke. Um... And it just was, it creeps up on you. And I just remember recently that I did look back at some YouTube videos, like when I first started, like in 2017, doing reviews of stuff like Discovery, which is why I started doing my YouTube channel, it was mostly to rant about what they did to Star Trek. Um, a lot of people started their, um, their YouTube channels over that. Um, I was there for that as well. But um, I looked so differently. I was, I was, I don't know what I weigh now. I was probably 10 or 15 kilos heavier, something like that. Um, and I think my hair's falling out. <laughs> I don't know if I'm that sick or not. Um, I don't feel like I am, but um, I don't know. That's something I, that just started to happen. I'm not sure if that's related to... Uh, it might be stress. It's not massive or anything, but I've just noticed it's... Yeah, a lot of little things. And I'm like, okay, I need to start watching this. I need to start taking this seriously. And the song kind of helped and reminded me. It probably saved my life the first time. It's probably doing it again. But... um. I just want to share this. I mean, I know most people watch my channel for YouTube and I mean for YouTube, my YouTube channel for Star Trek and Madonna stuff. Um, not for me talking about my life, but it is my YouTube channel. It is my vlog basically, and I do occasionally just do stuff talking about stuff in my life. And this will relate to the reviews of the films when I um put them up, which I'm just doing for fun because I really love these films. They mean a lot to me. And as we move towards Pride Month, I thought it might be fun to just put them up leading up to and into Pride Month because I've reviewed probably about 50 films. Um, I think I'm getting around those numbers. Um, they're all on my YouTube, I just haven't started putting them up yet. I'm sort of going to wait till I finish them all and then do a little bit of a assessment of like the gay, gay cinema in general. And then um, as we lead up to um, Pride Month, probably I'll probably start putting them up in May, I guess, so in a week or so. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go. Feel free to share, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think of these songs. Um, I wish I wish Charlene's I've Never Been To Me got a bit more respect than it does. But um, Philadelphia, you know, was always, you know, well received. So, um, yeah, if you haven't listened to them, listen to them. If you have an opinion of them, let me know. I'm going to go. It's getting near 10 minutes. I was going to try and do this in five minutes but um no just too much to say it whatever it's, it's my vlog anyway um if you if you're listening to this you're gonna listen to the whole thing and if you're not
doesn't matter how long it is or how short it is. But um, 10 minutes, I better go.